Hi, and welcome back. So a study I recently read out of America caught my eye in that it looked into the types of fat that we have in our body and which types of fat specifically protect us from brain disorders such as Alzheimer's and dementia. And if we can fend off those diseases of aging, then we can improve our health span and ultimately our lifespan. Enough waffling off me, let's jump into the presentation and let's see what this study about fat has got to offer. This is a review of a study I read that was penned by the Medical College of Georgia at Augusta University, which was published in the journal Nature Communications that looked into three types of fat that we have and which one has the highest protective effect when it comes to brain disorders. And there are links in the description below to the studies and the articles I used to put this presentation together. Beige is generally considered to be a calming color when it comes to things like paint and materials. And scientists have now got new evidence to show that beige fat has a similar impact on our brain in that it brings down the inflammation associated with the more common white fat and provides protection from dementia. As well as beige fat and white fat, there is also brown fat. Beige fat and brown fat are similar, but they are not exactly the same. These researchers found and published in the journal Nature Communications that beige fat cells, which are typically intermingled with white fat cells, and are found in the subcutaneous fat present in pear-shaped people, and that it facilitates subcutaneous fats brain protection. Generally, when it comes to fat distribution, there are two types of people. Pear-shaped people, whose weight is generally distributed more evenly around their body, and apple-shaped people, individuals whose fat is clustered around their middle and often around their internal organs, such as the liver, the kidneys and the heart. When compared to apple-shaped people, pear-shaped people are considered less at risk for cardiometabolic problems, such as heart disease and diabetes, as well as cognitive decline. Now, these researchers have shown that beige fat cells or adipocytes are indispensable to the neuroprotective and anti-inflammatory effects of subcutaneous fat. In fact, without beige adipocytes in the face of a high fat diet, they saw subcutaneous fat starts acting like more dangerous visceral fat. This was reported by Dr. Alexis Stranahan, a neuroscientist at the Medical College of Georgia at Augusta University in the Journal of Clinical Investigation. In that visceral adiposity sends a message to resident immune cells in the brain to fire up inflammation, which ultimately damages cognition. Visceral fat found around the organs is mostly made up of white fat cells, which store energy as triglycerides. Triglycerides are another type of fat that is found in our blood and is a risk factor for heart disease and stroke when found above the normal reference range. Particularly in young people, subcutaneous fat is a mixture of white cells and beige cells. These beige cells are more like brown cells in that they are packed with powerhouses called the mitochondria. Beige cells are efficient at using fat and sugars to produce heat in a process called thermogenesis. Exercise and cold exposure are said to enable the so-called beijing of white fat cells. For some of the studies, the researchers used male mice with a specific gene knocked out. This gene prevents adipocytes in the subcutaneous fat from beijing or browning, effectively resulting in subcutaneous fat that is far more like visceral fat. It's already known that mice on high fat diets develop diabetes more quickly than those with normal amounts of beige fat. It's also known that transplanting subcutaneous fat into an obese mouse will improve their metabolic profile within a few weeks. So let's take a look at the results. While the normal and gene adjusted mice gained about the same amount of weight over the four weeks, the mice without functional beige fat displayed accelerated cognitive dysfunction when they were tested. Also, 
their brains and bodies indicated a strong, rapid inflammatory response to the high fat diet that included activation of microglial cells. These are immune cells found in the brain and the spinal column. These cells, when activated, can further heighten inflammation and contribute to dementia and other brain related issues. Before they even developed diabetes, the microglia of the mice whose ages were comparable to a 20 something year old human had already turned on numerous inflammatory markers. Interestingly, the normal mice they studied also turned on these markers, but they also turned on anti-inflammatory markers as well, apparently to minimize any response. It normally takes mice about three months on a high fat diet to show these kind of responses. In the beige fat gene adapted mice, it took just a single month. To further explore the impact of beige fat, they also transplanted subcutaneous fat from young, lean, healthy mice into the visceral compartment of otherwise normal but now obese mice who had developed dementia-like behavior after remaining on a high fat diet for 10 to 12 weeks. But what did this fat transplant actually do? So what were the results? Transplanting the subcutaneous fat resulted in improved memory by restoring normal synaptic plasticity. That's the ability for the connections between neurons to adapt so they can communicate with the hippocampus. That's the center of learning and memory deep in the brain. These positive changes were dependent on the beige adipocytes in the donor's subcutaneous fat. That was written by Dr. Stranahan and her colleagues. Transplants from the beige fat gene adapted mice, on the other hand, did not improve cognition in the obese mice. And this was including strict objective measures that looked at increased electrical activity between their neurons. Dr. Alexis Stranahan, PhD, an associate professor in the Department of Neuroscience and Regenerative Medicine at Augusta University said, if we can figure out what it is about beige fat that limits inflammation, and maybe what it is about beige fat that improves brain plasticity, then maybe we can mimic that somehow with a drug or with cold stimulated beijing, or even taking out some of your subcutaneous fat when you're young, freezing it and giving it back to you when you are older. All fat tends to be packed with immune cells, which can both promote and calm inflammation. The team found beige fat interacts continuously with those immune cells, inducing the anti-inflammatory cytokine IL-4 in the subcutaneous fat. IL-4 in turn is required for cold to stimulate the beijing of white fat. Their findings suggest IL-4 is directly involved in communication between beige adipocytes and the neurons in the hippocampus. There is strong evidence that in chronic obesity, your own immune cells can reach the brain. And there was no evidence in this case that it was the donor's immune cells that were making that journey. Professor Stranahan said, it's exciting because we have a way for peripheral immune cells to interact with the brain in a way that promotes cognition. She also noted that there are also many bad things immune cells could do in the brain, like contribute to stroke and Alzheimer's. In adults, brown fat is primarily located between the shoulder blades and in the upper chest. Evidence suggests we can increase brown and beige fat cells by exposing ourselves to cooler and colder temperatures for several hours daily and also through intense exercise. These approaches can also prompt the beijing of white fat. Most of us probably have some combination of fat cell types, mostly white, less beige, but even less brown. So I hope you found that interesting or informative, hopefully both. In a nutshell, it looks like the more beige and the more brown fat we have, the better and the less white also the better. We can also turn our white fat into brown and beige fat by exposing ourselves to colder temperatures and by, uh, by carrying out or conducting extreme exercise. 
I did cover this subject a few years ago about ways that we can exercise or colder temperatures specifically for turning white fat into brown. Um, one of the reasons, as well as improving my sleep, it's one of the reasons that I've turned down the temperature in my bedroom at night, much to the chagrin of my wife, because she's always cold, um, hoping that I will be turning for the eight hours that I'm sleeping in a very, very cold bedroom between 18 and 20 degrees centigrade. I'll be turning some of my brown fat or some of my white fat into brown and beige fat. Now, this study um, was only conducted in mice, but when it comes to longevity, when it comes to actually looking at what you can do safely to yourself, as Andrew Huberman said. Just to take a step back, I know a lot of people out there, are like if there isn't a double-blind placebo-controlled trial, you know, random, random trial, then why would you ever take something? And then there are a lot of people like David or me or a lot of people out there who think, well, if there are some mouse data or something safe, why wouldn't I try? Right. Because when it comes to longevity, nobody wants to be in the control group. 